Hello everybody and welcome to the North Carolinian channel. I'm your host NC. Well, I've started a new series on the thoughts and the hearts of believers and how they should be aligned with Christ. Uh, the first in the series is called The Above Things and today uh, the second one is called Of His Mind. If this is something that interests you on how we can get our minds and our hearts aligned with Christ and hopefully keep them there, then by all means, check me and the Lord out on the channel. God bless. Hello everyone and welcome to the North Carolinian channel. I'm your host NC. In an earlier teaching entitled The Above Things, I tackled why Christians should focus their gaze and perspective heavenward and what the scriptures say for our minds to dwell upon. In this post, I will be examining more of what a holy or set apart for Christ mind is supposed to resemble. Maturity in the thought life of the Christian is a must. This call to a higher thought life is not easy, but has its own rewards. Paul explains this idea when he addressed the believers in Corinth the first time, quote, when I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. 1 Corinthians 13, 11. The war on any decision or challenge in our lives begins on the battleground of our mind. Every skirmish, no matter what the size in our head or lives, needs to be filtered through the Word of God and His Holy Spirit. Paul encourages the believers in Corinth and Christians down through the ages when he says, quote, We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. Taking every thought captive and making it obedient to Christ is a major, lifelong undertaking. However, in order to accomplish that and, quote, demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, the believer has to know God's thoughts on any given matter. The Christian has to know the Word of God. Mr. Rick Renner qualifies the phrase, take every thought captive, by saying the words bringing into captivity are from the Greek word, which I cannot pronounce, but it's spelled A-I-C-H-M-A-L-O-T-I-D-Z-O, which pictured a soldier who has captured an enemy and now leads him into captivity with the point of a sharpened spear thrust into the flesh in his back. The captured enemy knows that if he tries to move or get away, the Roman soldier will shove that spear clear through his torso and kill him. Therefore, this captive doesn't dare move but remains silent, submissive, and non-resistant. There are a plethora of influences that can distract the believer's mind from God. While Satan manipulated Peter, Peter momentarily, Jesus said, you do not have in mind the things of God, but the things of man, Matthew 16, 23. Notice that Jesus stated Satan's agenda is keeping humanity's focused on ourselves, quote, the things of man. Paul, in his letter to the church in Ephesus, also spoke to Satan's tricks. Quote, Put on the full armor of God so that 
you can take your stand against the devil's schemes, Ephesians 6.11. The word schemes translates to mind games. Remember what Christ told his disciples as he sent them out to minister? Quote, therefore be as shrewd as snakes and as innocent as doves. That's Matthew 10, 16. The enemy is crafty, so believers must be, and it all starts with the mind. With Christ and Paul emphasizing this target, our mind, is it any real surprise that we have Paul encouraging believers to be spiritually prepared for battle against the devil's mind games with the helmet of salvation, Ephesians 6, 17. It is a piece of the armor of God that we can pray for that protects our thoughts. The helmet is also meant to keep our thoughts focused on God and his work of salvation in our lives, hence the name. I believe this goes a long way in fulfilling what Paul mentions in Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Quote, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Ever wanted to know what God was thinking about in your life? Then keep renewing your mind and taking every thought captive to make it obey Christ. The battle, God's plan, and the rewards all start with our thoughts. The word for renewing in the original Greek means to totally remodel, to gut out and restructure. Therefore, the reward for having a renewed, remodeled, or restructured mind to that of the things of Christ is being able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Taking every thought captive is a challenge, but the more you practice, the more you become of his mind. Thank you, everyone, for listening to this teaching of of his mind. I hope it uh, blessed you and challenged you to renew your thinking in order to be a better transformed Christian and um, also just to be sure to put on that full armor of God. Uh, be sure that your helmet of salvation is prayed on uh, every every morning for the, the whole day and to also be sure to take every thought captive as, as much as possible. Make sure that you are doing like that that Roman soldier is just putting that, that spear on the back of every thought and making sure it's be behaving itself. If this did bless you, make sure you uh, hit the like button, the subscribe button, tell somebody about it. The next installment of the series, we're going to shift gears to the heart. So be sure to check that out. Until next time, God bless you.